Ottawa is more than just Canada's capital. It is a city steeped in history, culture, and natural beauty. Today we're here to see some of the amazing places Ottawa has. Fantastic waterfalls. Notre Dame Cathedral. The National Gallery of Canada. Mysterious Giant Spider. A Rembrandt exhibition along with other displays. Scenic views of Parliament Hill. More waterfalls. Watch Canada confront a dark past. Watch boats go up the world famous Redu Canal. Watch the change of guard at the war memorial. Visit a whole bunch of other places too. Let's begin our journey by taking a look at some of Ottawa's natural beauty. Here we are at the Prince of Wales Falls, more commonly known as Hogsback Falls. Hogsback Falls are actually a series of artificial waterfalls on the Rideau River in Ottawa. The falls are located north of Mooney's Bay, the point where the Rideau Canal splits from the Rideau River. Before the construction of the Rideau Canal, these were a set of rapids originally known as the Three Rock Rapids and were about 600 meters in length with a drop of about 1.8 meters. They were completely navigable by canoe and no portage was required. Lieutenant Colonel John By designed the Redu Canal and it called for a large dam to be erected at this location. The dam would divert water from the Redu River into the artificially created section of the canal leading to the Ottawa Locks. The building of this dam provided one of the greatest construction challenges as it collapsed three times during construction of the Redu Canal. But when completed in 1831, it flooded the Redu River at that point by 12.5 meters or 41 feet. To accommodate the natural flow of the Redu River and to prevent damage from spring flooding, a large wastewater weir was constructed. The water from this flows through a channel that was excavated in the eastern bank of the Redu River. This created the Hogsback Falls that we see today. Here, the Redu Canal leaves the Redu River and enters a man-made canal leading to the Ottawa Locks. Nature somehow took over this area and to this day you can see a wonderful park surrounding the dam. Don't miss Hogsback Falls if you ever get a chance to visit Ottawa. Enjoy the scenic natural beauty that surrounds the area and explore down the river. Now we'll be moving on to the next part of our journey to Napian Point in Ottawa. Here the National Art Gallery is located. Also opposite to that there is the Notre Dame Cathedral and a giant 30 foot tall spider called Maman is also located there. After a bit of deliberation, we decided to go inside the gallery and check out the Rembrandt exhibition and also all the other displays that they would have. The entrance to the gallery is unassuming but has an abstract sculpture on display. The beautifully designed gallery gives us the impression of vastness as we look at the high ceilings and the beautifully designed architecture surrounding it. We head to the Rembrandt exhibition first. 
it was beautiful to see so many Rembrandt paintings and prints in one place. One of the other contrasting features was that a lot of his contemporary artists were also displayed alongside his works. When it comes to self-portraits, Rembrandt was the most prolific of all artists. It almost gives us the impression that he was quite narcissistic. Rembrandt is considered one of the greatest visual artists in the history of art. Rembrandt's works depict a wide range of style and subject matter, from portraits and self-portraits to landscapes, genre scenes, allegorical and historical scenes, and biblical and mythological themes as well as animal studies. His contributions to art came in a period of great wealth and cultural achievement that historians call the Dutch Golden Age, when Dutch art, although in many ways antithetical to the Baroque style that dominated Europe, was extremely prolific and innovative and gave rise to important new genres. After Rembrandt achieved success as a portrait painter during his youth, Rembrandt's later years were marked by personal tragedy and financial hardships. Yet his etchings and paintings were popular throughout his lifetime. His reputation as an artist remained high, and for 20 years he taught many important Dutch painters. Let's move on from the Rembrandt exhibition and see what other things are displayed in this gallery. Check out this statue that's in one of the halls of the gallery. It reminds me of an Indian wedding. The National Gallery of Canada is Canada's National Art Museum. The building takes up well over half a million square feet of space with 133,000 square feet of space used for exhibiting art. It is one of the largest art museums in North America by exhibition space. The museum's permanent collection includes over 93,000 works from European, American, and Asian, Canadian, and indigenous artists. In addition to exhibiting works from its permanent collection, the museum also organizes and hosts a number of traveling exhibitions. Check out this audio-visual display set up by the art, South African artist William Kentridge. The display is stunning as it touches over so many aspects of our world as well as the history of slavery itself.
Look at the beautiful way the artist has used honeycomb over a porcelain doll. Here we have a painting by Pablo Picasso. This next painting is by the artist Henry Matisse, who is, like Pablo Picasso, one of the foremost modern painters. This sculpture is supposed to represent a medieval knight, but it reminds me of the Cylons in Battlestar Galactica. Paintings worth hundreds of millions of dollars are located just in this gallery alone. Here are some paintings by Vincent van Gogh. Here are some paintings by Claude Monet, my favorite impressionist. Gauguin never fails to capture one's attention. I never really expected to find so many paintings from famous artists in this gallery, and I was truly surprised and stunned to see them. Here's a painting by Degas. If you're enjoying this video, please share, like, and subscribe to our channel. Stay with us, there's much more to see in Ottawa. If you're into art, please don't miss visiting this gallery because it is truly stunning. And it's impossible for me to actually describe all the wonderful paintings here in this short video. So give it a visit when you can. Enjoy the rest of the displays. This mysterious spider is called Maman, a bronze and stainless steel marble sculpture by the artist Louis Bourgeois. It was created to remember her mother who used to like spinning. We were hoping to cross the street and visit the Cathedral of Notre Dame, which has a very, very beautiful ceiling. Unfortunately, it was closed on that day. Instead, we decided to visit the Byward Market, named after the famous Colonel Bai, who actually designed the Ridu Canal. There is a World War II memorial right across the street too. Check out this cool map made in bronze. We then visit Major Hills Park with stunning views of Parliament Hill and the Ottawa River. As we move further into the park, 
views of the Parliament building slowly come up. The Parliament building is undergoing renovations. That's why there are so many building cranes around. The renovations are set to cost almost $3 billion and will be completed in 2028. Views of the other side of the Chateau L'Oreal Fairmount are also visible from this park. Listen carefully, you can hear the bell tolling. Here we have one of the iconic views of Parliament Hill alongside the Ottawa River. Gatineau, located in Quebec, is also visible from this point. Plaques commemorating the selection of Ottawa as Canada's capital are also found here. We head further down to the place where the Ridu Canal meets the Ottawa River. As we head forward, we can hear the sound of gushing water. We finally get our first view of the Ridu Canal. Later, we'll stand by the Chateau Laurier to see boats going up the canal. But first, let's visit another waterfall that is less known to most people, but very, very beautiful. Here we are at Ridu Falls, located near Stanley Park. Ridu Falls is the place where the Ridu River meets the Ottawa River. It kind of reminds me of a smaller version of Niagara Falls. Haze from the forest fires of Northern Ontario has turned the sky red. Ducks will often forage for food 
precariously sitting along the ridge of these waterfalls. Here we have another view of the falls. There is another se segment further down. The Radio Falls is bisected by Green Island, just south of Ottawa's old city hall. The Radio Canal itself was created to bypass this waterfalls. The famous fa French explorer Samuel de Champlain described the falls as a marvelous fall. It descends a height of 20 or 25 fathoms with such impetuosity that it makes an arch nearly 400 paces broad. The name of the Ridou River is taken from this falls. Ridou in French means curtain. The Commonwealth Air Force Memorial is also located on Green Island. The Aviation Memorial recognizes Canada's significant contributions towards the Allied forces during World War II. The next day, we decide to pay a visit to Ottawa's famous Parliament Hill where all the government buildings of the Canadian government are located. Here is a view of the Supreme Court of Canada. There are small statues like this scattered all across Ottawa City. As we walk along Wellington Street, we can see the Gothic revival architecture of these Canadian government buildings. Wellington Street is also adorned with festoons of the different provinces and territories that make up Canada. The festoons are colored with the flowers of each province. Even though the day was cloudy, it was an absolute pleasure to walk along these empty streets. Watch carefully and you'll see this red bus thing that looks like half a boat and half a bus. These are called amphibuses and they give tours of Ottawa and its landmarks as well as take you on a journey through the Ottawa River. 
Here is a view of the famous Confederation building. Finally, we reached Parliament Hill. Parliament Hill houses the House of Commons and the Parliament building. We walk up approaching the House of Commons. Here is another view of the Confederation building. Canada was once part of the British Empire, and like other countries in the British Empire, you will find statues commemorating Queen Victoria here too. The views from here are fantastic, and we can see the Ottawa River in the distance. Here is a side view of the Canadian Parliament. I don't know if you've noticed that for most of the trip, uh, all the Canadian flags are flying at half-mast. We'll be explaining why this is happening in a little while. The indigenous people of Canada were forced to assimilate into Christian Canadian society. And the residential school system was used to do this. It forced students into appalling states where they would be separated from their parents and where they would face experimentation by the Canadian government and the Catholic Church. Many students died and to this day mass graves are being discovered. It is estimated that anywhere from 3,200 to 30,000 children died this way. Here we can see people have left behind toys and teddy bears and over there we can see that there are a number of shoes commemorating the children who should have been able to walk down these paths. Canada is confronting its colonial past. Do you think other nations of the world with colonial pasts will ever be able to muster the courage to own up to the things that they have done? Leave a comment on what you think. There are Canadian heroes like Terry Fox, whose statue we see here. In 1980, he began the Marathon of Hope, a cross-country run to raise money for cancer research. The spread of cancer eventually forced him to end his quest after 143 days and ultimately cost him his life. The annual Terry Fox Run, first held in 1981, has grown to involve millions of participants in over 60 countries and is now the world's largest one-day fundraiser for cancer research. Over Canadian $800 million has been raised in his name as of April 2020. We are approaching the National War Memorial. We can see the digital signage on that building celebrating Indigenous history. Here we are at the National War Memorial. The National War Memorial is a tall granite structure with accreted bronze sculptures. Initially, it was co created to commemorate the Canadians who died in the First, Fall, First World War. It was in 1982 rededicated to also include those killed in the Second World War, Korean War, and in 2014, to add the dead of the Second Boer War and war in Afghanistan. 
as well as all Canadians killed in all conflicts past and future. The tomb of the unknown soldier in front of the memorial symbolizes the sacrifice is made by all Canadians who have died or may yet die for their country. The change of guard is here. Here we find statues of the Valiant Five, who were five prominent Canadian suffragists who advocated for women and children. In 1927, they petitioned the federal government to refer the issue of the eligibility of women to be senators to the Supreme Court of Canada. Look at these beautiful views of the Rideau Canal along the Canadian Senate building. We'll be heading to the Chateau Laurier 
to see how boats come up this canal. While we watch the boats go up this canal and the lock doors close and reopen, uh, I'm going to give you some fa historical facts about it. The Radio Canal connects Ottawa, Canada's capital, to Lake Ontario. The Canadas were the main front in the War of 1812 between the United States and the United Kingdom. At that time, most people and trade goods moved throughout Canada using the St. Lawrence River. And because of this, the British thought that it would be a good idea to create a canal connecting Ottawa to the other parts of Lake Ontario just in case the U.S. blockaded the St. Lawrence River. The construction of the canal was supervised by Lieutenant Colonel John By of the Royal Engineers. The canal work started in the fall of 1826 and it was completed by the spring of 1832. The first full steamboat transit of the canal was made by Robert Drummond Steamboat Redu, leaving Kingston on May 22, 1832 with Colonel By and his family on board and arriving in Bytown on May 29, 1832. The final cost of the canal's construction was 822,804 pounds when all the costs including land acquisition were accounted for in 1834. Because of the unexpected cost overruns, John By was recalled to London and was retired. He received no accolades or recognition for his tremendous accomplishment. The Redu Canal is the oldest continuously operated slackwater canal system in North America. In 2007, it was registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The average renewal canal lock lift uses 1.3 million liters of water, and the canal's overall length is 202 kilometers long. The cycle is nearly complete, and now the boats in this part of the canal can move on to the next part of the lock. Our two-day visit to Ottawa is now coming to an end. It's far too short a time to actually see all the sights that this city has to offer. So if you ever get the chance, please take some more time and visit the city and go through all the different localities. Ottawa is certainly more than just Canada's political capital. Ottawa is a center of culture, a place where French Canada and English-speaking Canada meet. It is a place of great natural beauty. It is also a place steeped in cultural history. So don't miss out on any chances to visit this wonderful city. These videos are made for you and we would like to hear your comments on all the things that we have presented here.
If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to comment because we want to hear from you. For more videos, please visit www.myamazingcanada.com.